The world needs entrepreneurs. The world needs people that want to add value and to do good. So the world will suck you in and present to you opportunities. My name is Lorenzo and I am the CEO of Creative Zone, one of the largest business setup companies in the UAE. When you set up a company, 20 employees in our company get involved. Chain of people who have to support. Yeah. So 99% of the businesses that get started don't recognize where things are going to go eventually. I see a lot of people expecting a little bit too much from things right from the start and things like in anything else in life takes time. Adapt yourself as, as you go along because the same way that you're gonna have challenges, you're gonna have a lot of opportunities. If you could advise startups on three things to watch out for, what would they be? I would say number one, Gladiators, welcome back to the special edition of uh, Gladiator Mastery. Um, what I would like to do is introduce a dear friend of mine that I met about four years ago, and we just hit it off straight away. And I respect this gentleman um, very, very highly. I don't know how he manages and juggles all these balls and they're spinning all the plates at the time, but it was it took me about three years to get him on this podcast, and I'm honored to welcome you to the arena, Lorenzo Yores. Yes. Joris. Joris. Yes. Joris, thank you. Do you pronounce the J or do you don't pronounce the J? Yeah, I mean, it's a Belgium name. I'm, Belgium. I'm not even sure how it's pronounced properly, but people call, say, Joris. Yes. Because you're Argentinian. I was born in Argentina. My father is Belgium. My mother is German. And, oh, I uh, see. I yeah. see. So all your the blood that runs through you is European. Yeah, I'm European with a Latino look and feel. Oh, my <laughs> God. Lucky you blessed son. I hate, I hate you already. So... Um, Welcome to the arena. Thank you. Welcome to Dubai. How long have you been to Dubai now? It's coming to 17, 18 years now. Wow, longer than me. And you're the CEO of the Creative Zone. Correct. But before we go into what you do and Creative Zone, I'd love to hear your story because you have an amazing story. Uh, my staff were doing some research and you've literally traveled the world. Yeah. Um, you were born in Argentina. Are you an Argentinian supporter football? Uh, absolutely, of course. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank I had you. A, I had a misfortune of going to Qatar and watching Iran get stuffed by England. Uh -huh. So, but then the atmosphere was amazing. Did yeah. you go? Yeah, yeah. I managed to go there for the semifinals. Then mm. we won that and my family was there and they said, we're going to the finals. I said, I can't take it. I, I don't think I can the manage. Emotions. So I, uh, my family went, I didn't stay for the finals. Did you regret it? Um, I do. I do now. Yes. It was a roller, it was it was a roller coaster. It, it was, was an, one of the greatest yeah, finals. I knew I would have jinxed it in a way. I think if I was there, we would have lost probably. So I said, yeah. um, I'm happy I saw it from some little restaurant in Abu Dhabi we were doing a staycation somewhere and I saw it there you'll never forget it yeah amazing yeah so tell us a little bit about you. you were born in Argentina where Buenos Aires Buenos Aires I was born in in, in the 70s 1974 in Argentina I hate you even more because uh, I was born in the 60s oh wow uh, get out now well, nowadays I mean we were we were in a panel the other day and this kid went I'm from 1992 we were like oh come on so yeah, uh, man, the, the people in business born in two thousands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, true. if you imagine if you were two thousand, you, you're twenty four. That's incredible, yeah. isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time flies. So yeah, born in Argentina, born and raised there. I left Argentina uh, when I was seventeen, eighteen. I have a quite a funny story. I went to England to play cricket, semi professionally or professionally. I ended up playing uh, for the B team of Surrey County Cricket Club for for two seasons. I did that uh, for a while, and then I realized cricket wasn't something I wanted to do uh, for, for as a career for the rest of my life. So I went back to school in Argentina, finished that. And in the year 2001, we had a very bad crisis in the country, and I left Argentina. I moved to Spain and got a job that required me to travel all over the world. Where about in Spain? I was based in Madrid, but I lived very, very few days in the year. And I was traveling around the world, and long story short, uh, I ended up going to Tanzania. And when I was there in Tanzania, it was 2005, 2006, and we were doing a communications campaign for the government, and the, the government then there, yeah, what you're offering us is very nice. We were trying to do this promotional work for the New York Times about Tanzania to promote them. And they said, yeah, American media is nice, but we're very interested in what's happening in this part of the world, this place called Dubai. And they told me, why don't you go there and try to figure out if there is something that we could do over there to promote ourselves. And I said, okay, let, let me have a look. So I came here in 2006. I fell in love with the city and I said, okay, this is where I want to live and, and you quit. stay. Yeah. 
And you didn't stay in the company, send them information. Yeah, I you decided to. I did. So in that year, I started my own business doing a similar thing. But at that time, it was mainly about doing television shows. So the previous company I was working with was doing printed uh, uh, economic reports. And I said, this will work really well. But if you do it on TV, because everybody I feel wants to be on TV rather than appear on a picture on a, on a yeah. magazine or a newspaper. So I did that. I set up a company. Even back then, my first license was with Raques uh, in, in, in Ras Algema, and I got a license there, and I started, um, that at that time was uh, Ras Algema Free Trade Zone. Were you way. by yourself then? I had, a, I had a partner, and you're going to like this. She was from Iran. Okay. Her name is Leila, and uh, together we set up this business, and we traveled the world for 15 years. Uh, doing these television communications campaigns uh, on behalf of countries. We did this very successfully. I learned so much from all these interactions, interviewing presidents, prime ministers, CEOs of the biggest companies in these countries. We learned from the mining industry in Angola to cotton production in India or tourism in Antigua and Barbuda or, or anything of the sort. So Every time you meet with someone, you, you have to learn about their lives and, you know, how they do business, what is important to them. So I, I honestly learned so much out of, out of this experience. But then you had to sell your services, right? You started your company. Yeah. Because I noticed you have extensive sales experience. I love sales. Yeah. So how did you, did you, what, did you pick up the phone, phone governments? How did you get all these contracts? It's bad enough. People listening thinking, I can't sell next door. Yeah. How did this guy sell this his startup all over the world? It's funny. And, and I, it, that's such a good question. And I used to get this a lot. Like, how would you go about opening markets? And it's it's really interesting to see the power of media and, and what how it opens doors. Like, I remember we would be finishing one project and three, four weeks before ending one, we would start sending letters to around the world, mostly presidents and prime ministers saying, we would like to come to your country, shoot a TV interview with you that's going to be here on ABC television, in BBC or on CNN. And you'll be surprised how people are well, ready to, to welcome you and, and open their doors. And so we will send these letters out and, um, and we will meet these people. And then after that initial interaction, you know, as you're saying, it's a sales job. We would sell ourselves. We would say, listen, so... We would go there, we would say, we don't only want to shoot this interview, we want to shoot a series of television shows, stay in the country two, three months, interview this list of people. And they would like the idea. And, and, and we would present them with the, the notion that this is also, we needed support from the government in the form of sponsorship. And they would be open for it. As long as you're pro providing value. And so we were creating this mini uh, corporate videos for all the companies that they were getting involved in the project and the format worked really well and we would get all these institutions in, on board we will give them value they will be aired on the television show and uh, and then the country will have its exposure internationally so it's a win-win so you were traveling lots and lots how did that affect your relationship how long did you do that for yeah i did it about non-stop for about 12 13 years non-stop wow, i would live in a new country every two three months I think we counted it. We did about 50 different television shows of di 50 different countries. Incredible. Interviewed about 35 different presidents or prime ministers from around the world and thousands of ministers and and stuff. And uh, I I tried to scale the business. I couldn't. I tried to hire people around me to, to do those meetings, to raise the sponsorship, and it didn't work out. And... Um, I, I hired three teams and then whatever we were spending in in terms of, um, you know, salaries and logistics and plane tickets and hotel accommodation and what they were raising, it, was, it wasn't worth it. It wasn't money. worth it. Yes. So I said to Leila and my, and my partner, let's go and do this as long as we can ourselves. And that's what Until we did. We have enough energy. And then yeah. And, and actually, that's actually what, what happened. I, I crashed. I think it was uh, about eight, nine, ten years ago. I had a complete burnout and I had to stop. I was out of commission for about eight months or a year uh, where I, I couldn't I couldn't continue. I, I was I was because it sounds amazing, but then after a while, oh, life it, in a it takes a toll. It takes a toll yeah. on you. You get sick of hotel rooms and oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You can't even. What I find, I like I love traveling, but you lose your momentum. Yeah, because you your life changing all the time. Time zones. Yeah. Even going to the gym regularly, you lose yeah. that discipline. 
Yeah. And the body suffers. The body suffers. You become strange, especially for example with relationships. Like if, mm -hmm. every every new place you go, you know that these people in four or five months you're not going to see them again. Yes. And and you know that okay, you're going to be in touch, but then you lose. So you become a little bit introverted when it comes to how you build you connect yes. with people yes. and stuff. Absolutely. How did that affect your personal relationship? Well, uh, so Leila and I were in a relationship as yes. well. We were yes. business partners and, and dating. Uh, and then uh, in the end, we both went on our ways when it came to, to our lifestyle. Now I'm, I'm married, she's married, she's very happy, she has kids. Uh, we're still very good friends and, um, and uh, she came back to live in Dubai as well. Uh, but we knew that sooner or later we had to go our own ways. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. And then um, how did you, did, was your next position CEO of Creative? No, no. So how this came about was I, I, I sort of had to, to finish with this work. And I said, okay. And, and I was already living in Dubai, but I wasn't, I was never here. I was just spending a week out of uh, months. So I said, okay, let's, let's fully relocate to Dubai. So I had a little apartment here in Ticom. And I slowly uh, said, okay, let's start spending some more time. So at that time, I launched a, a magazine called Leaders Middle East. Um, and I had a production company because I knew a lot about production. But there I was, like, shooting little social media videos for restaurants and coffee shops mm -hmm. because that's Promoting what I knew. Yes. I knew what to do, you know. And, and I came from interviewing presidents and prime ministers. And, and so slowly I started to see that there wasn't a lot in that side of the business and the magazine, I knew I was getting into um, it knowing I want to make money because everywhere I went, like, say, why are you launching a print magazine when print when is dying? dying yeah. And so I knew that it was just a step for me into this new world. I knew that sooner or later I wanted to go back to the corporate world. I, I saw that I had more traits um, into, into being very, very useful in, in that world. Uh, and I knew that the magazine and, and this work would allow me to meet the right people. So it was actually uh, around that. I remember I went to meet a gentleman uh, called Armand Arton because of the magazine. I know him well. Uh, yeah. yeah. Global uh, Citizen. Correct. And uh, I remember during the meeting, I told him, look, I love your brand. I love what you're doing. I said, if, if I would ever consider going back to working with anybody, I'll, say, I'll, I'll, I'll work for you. And, and he hired me as a... Vice President of Global Growth and Strategy, and we were doing those events together. And that's how sort of my uh, life into the corporate world started evolving. And then I got offered to be the CEO of uh, Creative Zone. Well, congratulations. I, I came across Arten when he was in the villa on Al Walsall Road. Right, right. So that was one yeah, of the offices. Yeah, the Aston Martin. Yes, 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 and, yes, uh, yes. And then he grew and he's done very well yeah, for himself. Absolutely. I think he's going down the polit politics routes and UN and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I don't even know how to, because I'm all corporate. I don't even know how they play. Yeah. Uh, I went to one of his events in Europe. Uh, where was it? Montenegro. In Montenegro, yes, yeah, yes. Robert yes. De Niro came. Correct, correct. Uh, were you there? No, no, not in the Montenegro one, but uh, they've done it in, in Yerevan, in, in Montenegro. Yes. They've done it in Canada, they've done it in Dubai, Russell and Kaiman. now they're doing it in They Russell invited Kaiman. me to speak, but I'm away. Yeah. So it was yeah. either Maldives or Russell Kaima. I was like, mm, okay, I'll choose Maldives. <laughs> right. So amazing connection. So you, Creative Zone. Yeah. What was the size? Of, what, what do Creative Zone do? Creative Zone is one of the largest corporate service providers in the country. It's a company that was established uh, 14 years ago. And it was mainly, or is mainly, involved in helping people set up businesses in, in the UAE. Um, I think we're we're lucky to be part of an industry that the UAE, especially Dubai, has been a magnet of attracting people, families, investors, high net worth individuals wanting to relocate here, wanting to come and do business here, and they need a company like us to to figure out how to, to go about setting up a business, getting a trade license, uh, organizing their residency visas for them, their families, their employees, opening bank accounts. Now there's a lot to be done in regards to tax and accounting. So we have a tax and accounting arm for the business, audits, compliance. We become a little bit more uh, uh, compliant as a country. More forms are to be filled in and people need help with all of this. So this yeah. is this is what we do. I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, Creative Zone used to be very close to Ajman. 
Was it the adjuvant originally? Was was it with the adjuvant? Yeah. So and now y- you're creating a good link there. So mm-hmm. so the story goes. In fact, um, Creative Zoom was born out of a relationship that we have with we had and we have now with uh, Creative City Free Zone Authority that is in Fujeda. So Fujera. it's a it's a free zone in itself, okay. and uh, we were one of the sole agents representing Creative City in the UAE and selling their products. That's the name Creative Zone. Oh, I see. So we were mostly at that time only selling the Creative City uh, Fujera. free zone Fujeda. And then uh, sort of the market opened up. Now there's 52 different free zones. And as a company, it made sense for us to not only represent one free zone, but cool. all other options. And, and that's uh, now that's... So when that's you started, how many free zone relationships <clears throat> did they have? Well, only one with Creative When City. you started? Yeah, no, well, I joined the company. It's already four years now. Mm-hmm. I'm entering my fifth year. Um, so what's the growth been like over the last... Yeah, quite tremendous, I have to say. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> We we are a team of about, when I joined, we were about 80 employees. Now we are 220. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were doing about 40 company setups a month. Now we do about 200 company setups a month. Um, um, we have relationships with more than 30, 35 free zones. We have an office in Saudi Arabia and in Qatar that we set up two, three years ago. Saudi is, is the, the, the big future of things when it comes to this business as well. Uh, so we, we grew quite substantially. If I want to open up, thank you and congratulations. Yeah, thank you. If I want to open up an office in Saudi, because everybody's talking about Saudi, right? Correct. I p- probably don't want to live there, but I probably, if I want to do business there, yeah. personally speaking. Yeah. Um, is it easy to set up a company there? Is it easy to set up a bank account? Yeah, uh, it is and it is not. I mean, it's and it's funny how you put it like, I don't really want to live. You know, I think this is exactly how people saw Dubai 20 years ago. Right. You know, especially Somehow, Westerners. The and, flag of two swords. It doesn't appeal to yeah, me. But, it doesn't appeal to me as a like a, a holiday resort. You know, I think the marketing, yeah, branding, you can't, I know you're working with them. You probably no, no, no. Them, but Dubai is so marketable. Even Abu Dhabi. Yeah. I think the name sounds Arab. Dubai just rolls it to put it on. I think the branding matters. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. But I still feel that we're all going to be a little bit surprised of what is going to happen with that place even 20, 30 years from really? now. Really? I think uh, the amount of investment that is coming in, their plans ahead, the way that they're opening up, I, I totally see that it's going to for sure be up par with, with cities like Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Don't and, you think like with Dubai, they're more open to trade, they're more... Uh, open to European, like the way now I can't, when I was here 10 years ago, people couldn't dress the way they did in malls. Now people are holding hands, kissing, uh, mm. ladies are dressed skimply, skirts and stuff. Yeah, but you couldn't do that. Yeah, People will get, I remember sitting next to my wife, put my hand on the oh, chair yeah. and somebody came and said, please put your hand Absolutely. down. Absolutely. But now, it, but then I think Dubai maybe is more, I don't speak Arabic and I've done very well in Dubai. Yeah. I wonder if places like Saudi will ever go that far because I'm Iranian yeah. and they could they tried to modernize Iran in the 70s yeah. and the people turned. Yeah. Because they felt the Islamic thing was being pushed out right, and more right, European right. things were coming. Although we were doing very well, we were prospering economically. Yeah. But um the tradition took over. Right. How right. do you feel about that? I uh, look. Uh, I think it's yet to for us to see. Uh, but, but I think there's so many ingredients that uh, that make it look like it's 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 going to turn in the in the right way. You know, the size of the market, very big population. I mean, Iran had it too. You're right. Um, the amount of wealth, uh, their interest in wanting to bring a better, better sort of world for their citizens. Because the majority of population are young, aren't they? Yeah, Saudi very Arabia. young, very, very big population of. You've young. been many times. Yeah. So what's the feeling you get in the place? It's same as you did, seventeen years ago when you came to Dubai. Absolutely. Wow. And uh, and the welcoming spirit of the people and uh, wanting to show you everywhere and everything. Yes very hospitable, uh, very similar. Do you see women in employment there? Yeah, yeah, a lot. You do? Because I remember somebody saying a few years back, about five, six years ago, they went to uh, Saudi Arabia airport. And it was every, everywhere was men working. Every, men were drivers, men were behind the counter. Yeah, yeah. Has that changed? A lot, and especially in office, office roles. I mean, I would say 65, 70% of our own employment employees in our Saudi office are women. Amazing. So, Local uh, yeah, Saudi women. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, when you go to the business centers and you see a lot of Saudi women, so the, the so place eager, is really changing. They're eager to get into the market, but eager to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but Dubai will always have that position. I think Dubai will always be one step ahead of what it's trending, what it's making it. Uh, it's it's easier for a smaller country of the size of the UAE to to adapt to those quick things, mm-hmm. and we will always be one step ahead. Whether it's whether we're announcing now casinos or whatever that is, or or, or, AI, or AI, AI or Web3, we will mm-hmm. always be very fast, we'll Incredible. make it. Uh, yeah. Although the market's small, the leadership is a difference, isn't yeah. it? It's incredible yeah. leadership. Yeah. We're just blessed to be here yeah. at this time. I was, I was talking to a friend about this topic the other day. I think even when I started coming here 18 years ago, what really fascinates me of, 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 of the culture of the people here, even from that time, the number one thing that I realized, and it applies to the rest of the Middle Eastern countries, when you meet the locals here, you get this sense of that they go to you something like and says, what do you want? What do you need? Like, you go to them and say, I want to do this business. They're like, sure. What do you need from me? Like, how can I help you? Like, it's it's that mentality, like, right? Like wh- It wh- is, and it's. The, I don't think it's... Le- it's everything. It's even financial. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Talk financial. Yeah. Talk business, and it's yeah. just trade. Yeah. What yes, you want? Agree. How can I help you? What? Do, and people don't know that if you are smart on the way that you you know uh, come across, and it's it's all about giving, giving here. It's all about yes. giving them. If you give and you show that you're open and you're here to bring value, and people will will buy into you and they will they will help you because. It's in their culture to reciprocate back. It is. With, with Again, you have to be wise because I made yeah. that mistake. I, I yeah. helped a well, lot. You gave local. too much. I gave yeah. too much. And then this gentleman <clears throat> promised me the world. I'll tell you the story if you're interested. Yeah, I, promised, I had a, a 51% uh, partner and he said to me, no, I'm connected with his excellency, so-and-so. And then he said, uh, let me be a 51% partner yeah. and I'm, I'll give you this business, that business. I'm partners with these people. And we went to the notary, we changed. Yeah. And for 12 months, he didn't do anything. Okay. And we had leases to sign, we had commitments, car loans and stuff, and he would refuse to sign. Oh, wow. And then when I went over, he said, give me a million dirhams to get out. Oh, wow. So uh, the day of the, uh, I, I, I succumbed to it because he was costing me more. Yeah. And he said, I said, why am I giving you this? He goes, because of my name. And obviously he hadn't done anything. Yeah. So I went to the day of the notary and I was writing him a check for a million dirhams, right? Wow. And my hand was shaking yeah, I can imagine. because I'd just been ripped off, yeah. which is equivalent to about $250,000, right? right? So I'm shaking. He goes, why are, you, why are you shaking? I said, because I've never written a check for nothing, oh, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And he got offended and he left the notary mm. and he phoned up the uh, his PRO and said, tell him that I'm going to go and shut his business down. Unless he calls me back in and apologizes. Oh my God. I swear to God, this is like one nightmares of my life. By the way, the previous 12 months, I had to meet him in coffee shops where he was playing backgammon. So I had to sit there until he finished his backgammon game. Wow. Yeah, and he was eluding me. I, it was Ramadan. I had to wait till two in the morning to meet him. He'll go to the to do a prayer. He'll never come back. So where are you? I forgot you were waiting. He just played mind right. games. Yeah. So I had to pay. So anyhow, cut kind of long story. There are some bad stories. Really? So I'm just, yes, yes. the listeners, once in a while, and uh, believe me, in 15, 14 years being here, I, I just had one a bad experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was so painful yeah. that I don't want people blindly trusting. No, no absolutely. Um, you absolutely. know, it's like the word inshallah is is religious, you know, God willing, but it's overly used. Yeah. The moment I see you tomorrow, inshallah, I'm thinking it won't happen. Yeah. Right? yeah it's yeah. just, it's, it's different. Inshallah, we're alive, but yeah, the appointment, yeah. you can make it happen. Absolutely. So anyway, I had to apologize. He shut the notary down. I had to apologize to him in front of everyone. Wow. Uh, and then I paid him a million cashed a million the next day. Then I couldn't get my 51% back because I had a case against it for $30 million with Dubai Sports City. Oh no. So five years on, he's still 51% shareholder of my company. Oh God. But I've literally run it dry. There's no turnover. I've moved them into another company. Yeah, you started. But every year I have to pay for that license. Oh wow. So um, yeah, there are there are bad people yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But, Majority of people are very kind hearted yeah, yeah, and very yeah. giving. Mm. Uh, just very be, you know, sometimes I think opportunity blinds you mm, mm. and you miss the signs that are there. Well, we're also eager to make it happen mm-hmm. and to do something, you know, and, and you feel that it's the right one, but sometimes we jump onto things too quick. We, we don't do our research and, and we get stuck. Have you always been cautious? Or I'm, I'm a have there been times where you lost sleep as an entrepreneur? 
I, I do sleep, uh, lose, lose, lose sleep uh, as, a, as an entrepreneur. I am very cautious when I do business. Uh, some, I, I really run a lot by, by, by my feelings, by my guts, and, 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 I'm, and I take my time. I don't, I don't rush into things. I'm very conservative when it comes to doing mm -hmm. business. I'm not the type of guy that will jump. And I, I got burned with a few things here and there. You know, I think we all got a little bit burned with crypto and, and things like that. And we thought that the, the were the, the, you know, the big rescuers of, of things. And uh, so I do take my share of risks, but, uh, but I'm very- Manageable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you deal with, by the way, the Dubai story, the mm. licensing, because People listen and they think, well, how many licenses are they being sold? How many people are coming and going? Do you have those numbers? Mm. Is it going to continue to grow? Yeah. Is it growing? Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Um, there are studies that show that there is uh, about 500,000 new licenses uh, being issued every year. That's new licenses. Uh, if you think that is UAE a, or Dubai? The UAE. Wow. Uh, which is, if you think it's where a population of about 8 million, 500,000 new licenses is, is a lot, considering that there is a lot of already e existing issued yeah, licenses. Yeah. So wow. every year there is 500,000 new ones being issued. Um, I, I don't have the stats in terms of how many of those are for people, let's say, that are not really living in the country, because what's what's happening is a lot of uh, businesses or or what we call nowadays nomad entrepreneurs, they have a Dubai open license. license bank account, they trade, but they live they in live Germany. Also. And they operate from Germany or there, but they have a company here and they move around and they travel. So I would say there is there's a good number of those. I would say at least 40, 50 percent, perhaps, of these new licenses are for international, you know, business yes. owners that, that travel around the world. Um, but there's about 500,000 new licenses being That's issued. Incredible. Yeah, That's incredible. it's a big number. And uh, and to, to the second part of your question is, will it continue? I think it will, because I think, I think we're still on the tip of the iceberg when it comes to people recognizing how you could operate from here, you could travel around the world and own a business here. You could have an e-commerce company operating in, in Africa, but you could operate it from, from Dubai, have your office here, your bank accounts here. And, and tax-wise, um, is, is very cost-effective still, yes. although we, we introduced 9% corporate tax, but still compared to the rest of the world, is is very efficient. So, you know, the fact that you are connected to any any city in the world just jumping on an Emirates flight. You know, the, you have the biggest airline in the world uh, at your footsteps. You have the biggest airport in the world. This, this not very, not many countries around the world can offer Crazy you Crazy even this. when we say it, isn't it? It's, it's, because Dubai is a small city, really. Yeah, yeah. And we've got the biggest airports, biggest airline. Correct. And the standard is very high. Yeah. Because so yeah. I guess when you travel the world, have you noticed like... <laughs> 20 years ago, I used to go to Vegas all the time. Now it's like two star comparing to yeah. just normal standard of Dubai. Yeah. How do you think we've managed to keep those high standards? Uh, I, I hear that it comes from the leadership and starts from all the way to the top to Sheikh Mohammed and everybody sort of around him. They, they, they seem to be very strict when it comes to uh, attaining to, to service delivery and standards. I hear himself, Sheikh Mohammed, would traditionally walk around government offices and 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 he gets stats of of service delivery what and whenever he finds a, a department or a authority that is kind of a little bit weak on he has no problem changing people around and, and he gets moved on so uh because we run relatively small companies compared to the country that he runs. Yeah, of course. Imagine how many times he's had disappointments but he just kept that vision going. Yeah. How many times he goes to bed and people testing yeah. testing his resilience, right? Yeah. Because yeah. we get tested all the time. I mean, my company is nothing compared to yours, and then he's running a country. Yeah. And uh, the strange thing is people have stolen, still stolen from him knowing that he's the ruler of the country. Yeah. Because we have people steal from us, steal time or, yeah. or, or commitment. And again, he just continues. It's, yeah. it's just, we're just blessed. Yeah, really. Yeah, indeed. Have you had the pleasure of meeting him? Not personally, no. I mm -hmm. only saw him walking around the malls and things like this. Yeah. this is the, the closest I ever got to him. But um, no, I never got to, to meet him. You know, I wonder if I ever do, what do I say? It's crossed my mind because you <laughs> got about too. 30 too. seconds to get his attention. What do you say? Yeah. I'll probably go, shake my <laughs> I, I, <laughs> knees shaking. I, I thought the same thing. Yeah. What would I, 
I, I think the first thing that comes to my mind thank is you. just to thank, thank him, you. to thank him for for creating such a place for for us to live in and our to, children to be safe, oh my God. perfect education, yeah. health, yeah. every infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, you don't have, as Argentinians, you don't have to pay tax all over the world, do you? No, no, no. We okay. don't have Unlike I'm poor Americans yeah, listening yeah. to this, thinking yeah. you've got to pay tax everywhere. Yeah. So, um, do you get, have you, signing 200 licenses, do you get, have you had a success story whereby it's been a whale, it's been a unicorn? Mm. You started and it just expanded and they've done really well. Is mm. there a success story that comes to mind? Yeah, yeah, we, we have a lot of uh, decent sized companies that set up with us. Uh, we, we have big sized companies. We have companies like LG registered with us, uh, a lot of uh, the big uh, uh, restaurant chains, big groups of, of, of chain, uh, restaurant chains that they are create some clients. Uh, um, a lot of uh, e-commerce uh, uh, platforms. There's a company that comes to my mind, uh, Fruitful Day, uh, successful. They, they raised millions. Uh, My Ciara, a very successful app. Uh, we helped Insurance Market launch. Um, we we were part of the helping the entertainer group uh, launch with Donna Benton and, yes, and what she's, she's done. Wow, so she sold amazing. her company for millions, and I believe she's back at running things. Uh, so yeah, we have a lot of successful stories of people. Incredible. That so it's not just one man bands. No, no, you, absolutely. You have large organizations. Yeah, yeah. But many of them start with uh, mm -hmm. one small. man bands. Yeah. And, have uh, you ever like? Do you get in, in involved with all these startups that start? Do you, do you get to see who's signed? Because you you got two hundred staff to manage. Yeah. And then you got 200 new licenses. Absolutely. How engaged do you get in, in what we, areas that the licenses are coming out? And yeah, we, we, do, the we do get involved and um, we get involved whenever people reach out to us and say, how can you help us more? How can we, and this is what we are very proud of. We, we are constantly launching initiatives and seeing ways on how we can connect people, what other value services we can provide. It's, it's just really, we're there to help people and whatever that we can add value at any part of their journey, we're open. And, and we have an incredible network of amazing people like you and, and other mentors and coaches and advisors. And we do that, you know, if, if I know that someone might need a little bit of what you do and your services, we love being that bridge of things. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, that was one of the first things I remember walking into this job uh, four or five years ago. And, and, and we have a wall where, of course, you're tracking your sales on a, on a monthly basis. And, and you will see, imagine 200, imagine 200 company names on a wall. Yes. And you're reading, I don't know, uh, s vacation services and tour operator. These are 200 dreams. These are 200 new people that are starting. And for them, this is the biggest thing that they will ever do. Because the moment when you start a new business, it life. can compare itself with having a child or yeah. getting married or the day that you start a business, right? And, and you look at all these names and you're like, you, you're thinking these are people's dreams and and you can't avoid but to, to relate to the fact of thinking, look at all these people that are starting and their names and you want to really try to figure out what they're doing. And so every time I hear somebody in my team, they're having a call and they're advising someone, I always try to learn a little bit. For example, we were driving to Ras al Khaimah with my team yesterday in a, in a meeting and I hear one of the setup advisors talk to this guy and and this guy is explaining that he's into the business of refurbishing houses and, and flipping them and he's fixing them. I'm like, it's so true. This is such a good business nowadays. Like people are buying older houses nowadays. You know, Dubai went through this cycle and now you can find houses that are old, 15, oh, yes. 17 years old in yes. good locations and they need in to Dubai, be refurbished. In Dubai, that's, uh, that's old. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> listening in Europe, like only 17 <laughs> yeah, years old. Right. Our house is on 270. Uh, yeah. So it is yeah. really interesting to see what other people do and how they go about doing doing it. I guess you never get bored. No, no, you you can't. You how do you come up with all these initiatives? I want to talk about the <clears throat> recent initiative you just uh, yeah you just launched. Do you come out with? Do you have a team that you brainstorm all the time and constantly changing things? Yeah, yeah. We we have a team of about twenty three people in marketing alone. Mm -hmm. uh, I I love everything that is related to sales and marketing. It's it's, it's in my DNA. And uh, I am blessed. I have a great team that we sit down, we come up with ideas. We're, we're driven by what is the coolest, new, funky thing that we can launch in the market. But as I said, it's all about 
bringing people together. It's all about creating value. And I feel that in nowadays in any business, it's, it's all about creating a community. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you are a butcher or you're selling corporate services like us or you're selling passports or you're selling shoes, you need to create a community around you. And so a lot of our initiatives are aimed at that, is how yes. can we create a community uh, around us that then... We by serve each other. We yeah. help, we support each other. And, you and then people will come to you and say, oh, by the way, I, I need a license or I need... But it has not become the main purpose of it. We just mm -hmm. know that... The by nature, it, is the it just comes. comes so when you advertise, if you don't mind me asking, um, where does let's say you spend a hundred dollars on advertising through different platforms? Yeah, top three where the where the uh, the inquiries come from. Yeah, Who, who's what's the top one? Online or yeah? Google uh, so or? in in our sales funnel of things, uh, a good sixty percent of our um, new sales come from existing referrals or existing clients. Uh, that is, in fact, has been growing. I think it used to be 30, 40, 50. Now wow. it's become 60 to wow. even 70% wow. of our own sales come from our own network of clients, people that we know, our network. Uh, so the other 30, 40% come from digital campaigns and it's mostly divided between Google ads, social media ads, uh, YouTube ads. Is there a most popular country? Would it be UK still? Yeah, uh, is UK is our number one expat uh, jurisdiction when it mm -hmm. comes to the in, in, in inbound of, of new clients Yes, uh, from the European side of things. Uh, but still, the big majority of the people that acquire our services are people that are just relocated into the country. So although we do campaigns in the UK... They're here searching. They're Correct. Looking Once they're here, they're mm -hmm. saying, oh, how do I go about? So I could put Google ads in the UK and they work. Uh, and people start thinking, oh, now that I'm thinking of moving to Dubai, how about this? But they're we tend to do... wiring, but when they hear, they decide. Yes. So our, our biggest demand still is from the local market, mm -hmm. uh, but we do do international campaigns and they work well, but to a less uh, degree of success. Wonderful. Tell, tell us about this new campaign you have. Campaign? We're discussing um, the, the small startups. Start ah, there's, so we launched a, a new initiative called the initiative, Startup Circle. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so we launched a, a new concept called the Startup Circle. And uh, the idea of this is to create a, a portal, a, a platform that brings together everybody uh, that is part of the ecosystem of startups and entrepreneurs. They don't have to be licensee within three. You don't have to, no, no, not at all. This is open to anybody. You don't have to have a license. Perhaps you already have a license or no. It's, regardless, we're not doing it this, we're not doing this uh, with the purpose of trying to sell them a license. We just generally want to bring together the whole startup ecosystem um, together in the country, but with very uh, big ambitions to grow this internationally. We, in fact, uh, want to launch chapters of the startup circle in 10, 15 countries in the next one or two years. Because the idea of, of, of this is we want to interconnect the startup ecosystem around the world. So if we have 100, 200 members of the startup community, and, and we know them all. I mean, you're part of the ecosystem. You know who are the shakers and doers and of, of, of this industry, who are the, the advisors, the coaches, the mentors, who are the cool startups, which are the corporate service providers that are helping, which are the, the banks that are helping. So if we put all of this together, the, 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 the ecosystem... Uh, can be more supportive, save benefits. people time, money, and heartache. So how does it work? Is it an app? Is it a website? It's, it's a website. Mm -hmm. uh, we we have a digital app that is being built. Uh, so the website is launched. It's the website is launched. It's startupcircle.io. And there's no membership fee. It's not that we are charging people to, to pay for this. And what we will do is, is start launching a series of events, networking events. We have planned to launch something called Startup Wednesdays that every Wednesday, first Wednesday of the month, we will meet up in some nice hotel somewhere. Well, that's nice, physically. Yes. Instead of virtual. All the and time. we will yeah. always have amazing people like you, speakers, oh, you. mentors come, say a few words. Uh, uh, and then everyone's there and you're going to go meet up a, a banker, a lawyer, someone that can help you. It's all about that, about connecting one another and, and, and creating value for each other. That's amazing. And the peer group as well. Because sometimes when you're an owner, you think the problem is only yours. 
Yeah. And then you sit down with other people and you think, well, actually, I'm not the only one having these problems. Yeah. And everybody goes very similar problems. So understanding how did you fix this? What kind of tool do you use for that? Uh, I mean, it's invaluable advice. So at the moment, is your focus going down the Saudi route? Is there a big team pushing Saudi? Yeah. Are people here inquiring? Because I, I'll be interested because I know, for instance, with training, huge, huge opportunity. Absolutely. It's a young market. It's new today and they want training. So how would I go about opening a license and approximately how much would it cost for a training license? Yeah. No, good question. How easy is it to start a business operating in the, Saudi? In Saudi, there is two main routes uh, for setting up a business. You can set it up through uh, one of the licensing options is through something called MISA, the Ministry of uh, Investment of Saudi Arabia, that caters for foreigners that want to start a new company. And then you have the GCC route that is uh, mainly for GCC nationals or for those that perhaps um, are partnering uh, with a majority uh, of having a GCC or local partner. local local partner. Um, so if you want to go into the country uh, as a 100% foreign-owned company, you'll have to do it through this MISA option, and they will issue you a license. The good thing for now for Saudi is that there is there is only one license in jurisdiction, not like 52 like in the UA in the UAE. Um, it's not cheap at the moment. I think uh, Saudi is what the UAE used to be 15 years ago when it comes to the packages and, and how attractive they make it. I think they're still aiming at uh, the, the bigger type of companies. I think the UAE went a little bit faster into realizing the importance of bringing Small efficiency business. for the SMEs and for the smaller uh, players. Saudi is still aiming at, uh, at the bigger type of companies. Uh, they, they, they've launched some initiatives that relate to um, incentivizing people to move their headquarter offices in the Middle East. So they're saying if you show us that you're moving your regional offices here, they, they give you some interesting tax incentives as well because there is 20% tax, corporate tax for cor corporations there, but they're very flexible when it comes to, uh, to, to giving certain um, incentives. Um, but uh, just uh, generally speaking, a license can cost you anywhere between 100,000 dirhams. Which is about $25,000 yes, per to, annum. Per annum to set up uh, this company. And to this, you start adding the residency visas. They have a few restrictions that make it a little bit hard. Like, for example, your first employee has to be a Saudi national. Uh, that is the one that it becomes kind of your PRO or government relations person that uh, uh, opens all the government portals that we call them for mm -hmm. for all the uh, the permits that you will need with immigration, with labor, with uh, with uh, tax. And what's the average salary of that individual? Very similar to to the UAE. I think even a little bit cheaper. I think salaries are somehow a little bit cheaper, especially for 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 the Saudi uh, national nationals. people. And these Saudi nationals can have several positions like that, like PROs here. Yeah, they can have they can be a PRO yeah, for twenty thirty. Yeah, they could be listed. Companies. They could be listed in a few different. So companies. basically, some form of tax, really, because yeah, you have to, and yeah, and and it gives employment to the Saudi correct. population. Correct, correct, and and there are quite uh, strict. I think uh, in the, in the first year or, or two, uh, you you have to cater for about fifteen percent of your employment Workforce. has to be Saudi nationals. So they are being careful that you know this growth that has been witnessed and all these companies that are coming. The money is not going to go out; they're going to yeah, stay in the country. Stay, and yeah. it's interesting. and it's benefiting the local people. How long does this take on average? It takes a while. Uh, it's taking us as long as two three months sometimes wow. to fully set up a. A proper Saudi entity. Wow. Yeah. So your costs go higher and so forth. Yeah. Now with the population increasing, competition increasing, your margins are getting less. Yeah, yeah. Right? And uh, the cost of licensing gets less. Absolutely. Does the does the work get harder or now you established? It income? has. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot more work that goes beyond one company setup. Uh especially because of all the new regulation and compliance. Uh, there's a lot more steps that need to be overseen, a lot, a lot more documents that need to be filled in. Like, you know, when you set up a company, it's not like it used to be back in the day that you fill up a couple of forms. Now you need to do a lot of UBO declarations and ESR and AML and uh, all the corporate VAT registration and tax registration and this all. Mm -hmm. It's good to have a company like us to help you around with this. And, yeah, because and you don't know. 
Yeah, and, and people it's not just a about signing sold. a license. It's all the paperwork behind the scenes. Yeah, and then how do you keep up with all of this? Because so your administration departments really increased. Yeah, that's yeah. why we went from eighty employees to two hundred. I'm not claiming, uh, you know, it's it's to do with uh, admin wise. We become a lot more complex. I think I did a video a couple of months ago that that talks about when you set up a company, twenty uh, employees in our company get involved. Twenty. Wow. From from the person that advised you, the, the, then how we go about That's collecting. That's a chain of people who have to support yeah. you. So, I mean, not that I'm selling things here, but if imagine if you go to a small company that doesn't have the infrastructure around They're not going to be able to support you they, they, they can't because it goes through all the stages of the advisory, the have, collection of documents. Yes. Do you have introducers like people like me, for instance, I get yeah. approached all the time and then they can introduce you. Absolutely. Introduce the prospect to create We own. have a lot. We have a lot of people within our network that they, every day, every week, they call us, oh, I have a friend, I have a... And the funny part of this was when I started this uh, this role, it's, it's incredible. Every time you build a new connection, it takes about an hour and a half until you had that first conversation. They go, oh, by the way, That's I have somewhere. a guy, or I have a friend or my cousin or my friend or my girlfriend, or it's just incredible. And especially in a place like Dubai that everybody is about coming, setting up, getting a residency visa, because that's the other aspect that we're lucky that the format is in a way that either you are employed or you need to have your own business in order to have a residency visa. So a lot of people had the need to set up a company just to be able to stay in the country, Yes. right? So yes. everyone needs uh, either a residency visa of some shape or form. Um, to be in this country and benefit from yeah. all the, all the advant yeah. advantages. What's your opinion about a golden visa? Yeah. This was a Do very- you have one? I don't have one. I have one. You have I, one. I was one of the first ones to get it in uh -huh. the country when, when it came it, out. Is it, uh, first of all, there's, some people are gifted it, some people pay for it. How does it work? Yeah, so- so kind my of staff the, tell me I've got to pay. No, yeah, yeah. So uh, the program kind of evolved uh, as as it came out. So uh, when they first launched it, I think we were already two years and a half into it, if I'm not mistaken. By the way, the UAE Golden Visa Program is the biggest Golden Visa Program around the world. I don't remember if I'm going to quote this correctly, but something that it comes to me to say that there were about 300 or 400,000 golden visa issued so far in these two years. And to give you an idea, Portugal, who is the second biggest, is about 40,000. Whoa. So that's 10 times, 10 times the, the amount of uh, golden visa. Uh, and a issued. capital invested is the same in Portugal as it is here? Uh, so? They have different thresholds. Mm -hmm. So in They're Portugal. They're changing as well, actually. Yeah, or even they, they yeah. stopped the program. So in Portugal, you had to acquire a property worth. 280,000 euros, mm -hmm. which is similar to the uh, UAE one because you needed to acquire a property worth 2 million dirhams mm -hmm. to uh, to apply to for a 10-year golden visa. That was the property investment route. So there's three routes. There's a property investment of 2 million that now has been lowered to a million. And now even some new regulation came out this week that relates that you can show that you have done an advance, advance payment on, on a mortgage. So even now, if you have a mortgage worth- A commitment to a property. You can, you can apply for a golden visa. So all they're showing is that they're making it easier for for the expat community to feel that you you call this place home. And, and this came about, f about just because of a single uh, thing. During, during 2008 and 2008, 9, 10, during the financial crisis, Dubai lost a lot of its uh, inhabitants just because of the crisis. People lost jobs. They panicked and they left. They lost jobs. They couldn't stay around and they had to go because they don't have a residency. Mm. Uh, during COVID and stuff, you know, so the country started thinking, what can we do to not uh, lose let, the population? Yeah. Correct. So I said, make people feel yeah. that they have a longer term uh, commitment in the country and they said okay don't worry if you lost your job and you have a 10 year gold visa it's not that you need to go running to go find yourself a new employment um, so they they've I think this is what the UA has been really good at it's like listening to the market and say what is it that people need let's go and give it to them Clear. so residency visas was one of them I remember people complaining oh Dubai is not a place that you can walk because uh, yeah, what? No, no problem. They're building an entire dome, closed structure for walk, walk 
pathways and cycling. I don't know if you're familiar with this. That it's going to go throughout yes, the whole my city. My son cycles all over. I'm like, how did you get there? It's a cycling path. I'm like, crazy. no, but it's, now it's a dome close to one. No, so, where? Yeah, they're building it, they're and, building. and it's going to go through from Marina to downtown. And it's uh, with vegetation, uh, walk paths, and cycling tracks. On the beach side? Uh, 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 yeah, between Sheikh Side on the beach. No. They're doing a whole cycling, but it's in, 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 in a dome, enclosed. So summertime, seasonal, you can use it. So people kind of say, oh, it's, Dubai is not a city that you can walk. And well, no, there you go. People were saying, oh, D Dubai, you don't have culture, and you don't have museums. Uh, wait a minute, uh, Louvre, please uh, come and set up the biggest, uh, right? So Museum, yeah. um, uh, they listen to what people need. Oh, visas, no problem here, 10 good. So, yeah. Do you pay equivalent the same amount of money as you would, let's, the, the visas are two years, right? Yeah. So if you have a 10 year visa, do you pay five times the two year No, no, fee? It's, it's, it's a lot more cost effective. Uh, Is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, a 10 year golden visa government fees are um, as little as, I think 10,000 dirhams type Nothing. of thing, and that, that's it. So you don't. And then have you don't to. have to have the inconvenience of every couple of years. I might get it. No, and no more medicals every two, mm -hmm. two, 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 three years. You have. Are a, there people who gifted it? Are there people who? Are no, no. So it? what happened is when they first came with. I know this, lots of influencers like I got my golden visa. I was like, did they get it? Did they? No, no. So it? that used to be when it first launched. Uh -huh. The government started going out and saying, listen, because we feel that you are someone important to our society and our community. And they started giving it to, uh, to people in, in sports or in health or artists. I, I know. So I, they were gifted at one stage. Yeah, they were given to them and say, we would like to give you this. I so you don't have to have a, a be reapplying for your residency visa. Now you have a 10 year one. And so they started by giving it to, to the people that they wanted. Then they created a system that you could apply for it to, to a set of government entities that they were the ones approving them or not. Mm -hmm. So when that came about, uh, we were already in talks with people. At the time, it was from the Department of Commerce and, and DTCM. And... Um, and we were interested as a company to start offering this to people. So we went to them and said, what about we start giving you lists of people that are our own clients yeah, so that we qualify, feel, yes. and they said, okay, we like this. So we started submitting this and my visa was the first one to put in wow. so that we tested the, the system and I got a golden visa two years and a half Does ago. Does that still exist? Yeah. So I can come to you, although my license is not with No, so now this has been stopped. So okay. that program- Because it's not easy. Of, it was called by nomination. Mm -hmm. uh, so you will go nominate yourself or be nominated by a government entity and somebody will approve it and, and, and they, you will have to build a, a dossier, explain who you are and why you're contributing to this country and so on and so on. So after that, they said, all right, no, let's organize this. Let's put certain requirements. So they said, well, if you own property or if you have this, or if your salary is higher than this or that. So they created these requirements and then it falls under this. But as I said, since the program was launched, there's over three, 400,000 golden good. visas that have been issued. So there's so much people listening. I have probably about 60% of my followers are outside UAE. Yeah. And there's a bunch uh, especially, it's crazy, still in Europe and America that they think that uh, we're still a hundred years back. Mm. They, f they have a fear of coming. They tell me, so what can we wear? What can we go out? Can we drink? <laughs> yeah. So if you could um, educate, mm. if you could educate people from outside the UAE who are thinking about coming here, what would the top three things be that you can, ad that can take benefit, advantage from? Like yeah. we talk about, Taxes, yeah, right. So that's that's the most common thing in business, right? Yeah, because you, in U, UK you're paying 45 50 percent tax often. Yeah, here you pay ten. Yeah, but then it's extremely flexible because you can put your expenses against your yeah, yeah. business, so yeah. you could end up paying a lot less. Yeah, tax. or no, or no tax because no tax. the threshold is uh, you get taxed on. Profits that are beyond 375,000 dirhams, which is about $100,000. So if your SME, small company, makes below $100,000 a year in profits, you you, no you qualify for 0% tax. Indeed. So what would you say was the top three in incentives mm. for people to come to Dubai? Mm -hmm. um, I think- Or UAE, uh, beg your pardon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the the biggest winner of, of 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 what the UAE can offer is is this 
concept that to me, the world has encapsulated the way that we live, work and play in a different way. Like you used to have cities like the UK and you have here Rome on your, on your billboards and uh, uh, New York. Um, they were, they grew out of a concept that there were places where, you know, you, you could, it were very, they were very streamlined towards the, the work uh, aspect of life. Right. Um, and I think COVID told us that, uh, we ended up having to mix everything because we were restricted on, on how we could move around. So we said, oh no, wait a minute. Now, if I can move around, I want to be in a place where I can enjoy, I could work, it all. I can have it all. And this is what Dubai and the UAE ticks on that. Like it's a place that you have the beaches and the mountains and the work and an airplane that can take you anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, to me, is the biggest draw that the country can offer. You, you, you feel like you're a part of a place that, you can have a lot of fun at the same time. You have uh, year-round sunshine. Uh, you feel on holiday. You take your laptop and you're at the beach and you're working. So true. This is what people are after nowadays. Do you know what's incredible, Lorenzo? I, I, I'm walking around and I see somebody in a bikini or shorts. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this place is a holiday resort. Yeah. You think it's all about business because yeah. you're, when you're in business. Yeah. So um, do you spend much time with your beautiful family at weekends going away to the desert? All the time. So, really? All the time. So you're an out, outgoing. Yeah. And, and you, you, my wife hates, hates me for this, but I'm like, why do you want to go to Maldives when, when you have this? Or why do you want to go to Seychelles? I mean, we are big on staycations and traveling around the country. We spend a lot of time going to places like Fujeda, Nachman, and uh, finding those little. And what I love about this country that there's been a lot that has been coming up on these things. Mm -hmm. There's so many cool places in places like Hata, and new little resorts and trailer uh, hotels and, and these moon resorts with these domes that have been coming up. And honestly, there's you don't have enough weekends in the year for you to go and explore all the different options. I mean, honestly, Sadiat Island in Abu Dhabi, it's as nice as any beach in Maldives I so. that I, I believe it's that I gorgeous. Go. Um, a lot of people say it's expensive to live here. Yeah. But then what I say is you earn more. Mm -hmm. It's all relative. How, yeah. how would you, how would you? I agree. And I, I think people. People are listening saying, oh, you can afford it. You yeah. can go every weekend. I can't. Can they? Yeah, and, and I think people get a little bit confused from what they see on, on Instagram. And it's, it's, Dubai is not uh, all about that. I mean, if, if you want to live a, a bit more of a normal life and be a little bit more conservative on your expenses, you can. I mean, when I first came here, I, I didn't live on, on, on the most amazing neighborhood of, of the country. Uh, you can find decent, decent rent prices uh, in different places. And, and I still believe that the quality of life that you will have surpasses anywhere in the world, yes. that you will have. Because I think for us to live the way that you live and some of us live, in any other developed countries, in, in the UK, in France, and it will cost us probably, I would say, 20 times yes. to, so to what we pay here. To have that standard. To have that standard. For you to live in a really nice house, in, or let's say in a flat in JBR, overlooking the sea, and have all these restaurants, uh, what you pay there, trust me, is I would say 25% of what you will have to pay in anywhere like in New York, Monaco, Even France. New York, you don't get safety, you don't get any yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah. The other day we'd lost our nine-year-old in the mall yeah. and I went for a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll find us. Can you imagine in yeah, England yeah, or yeah. Europe or Argentina, wherever you, I, I would have been shut up, every gate down, you worry about yeah, the safety. Yeah, yeah. Here, I just went for a coffee. I said, he'll eventually find us. Yeah, yeah. My kids walk to seven-year-old. She she goes to the mall on her, on her own. Uh, I mean, she's not crossing streets and stuff, but... I mean, we're blessed with, uh, with, with the safety. I think you can easily take it for granted. People complain about maybe air quality, the heat. But if you actually take a step back, we are truly blessed, yeah. in, especially as family men. Yeah. You know, uh, the other uh, we went to England and my wife left her uh, belongings the first day in her car. Yeah. The car got broken into. My God. Within eight hours of landing yeah. in England. Yeah. We were there in London and somebody got robbed a knife point yeah, for the, yeah, for the yeah, watch yeah. inside Harrods. Yeah, yeah. And people saying, don't wear nice watches, don't have your phone. And what kind of life is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't own a key to my flat in 15 years. Wow. I don't have a key. The doors my, constant. Yeah. We, I don't I've have, never locked the door. I'm not going to say where I live though, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, we don't lock the doors. Incredible. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. 
and the cars and stuff. We just leave our belongings. But it's a bad habit to go because we're kind of protected here. Yeah. And you can take these habits, yeah, yeah. you know, outside and before you know it, it's gone. Um, in, in Thailand, we lived in Thailand for a while and uh, theft and security was a major issue. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you had to con constantly adapt. Yeah. Constantly adapt. True. So um, we have another chat five years down the line. What's, what's happening to Lorenzo and his family, what's what's your goals personally? Yeah, and then where do you see Creative Zone in five years? Yeah, uh, I love this country. Uh, I I hope I could be lucky enough to to be able to retire here and and to stay close to my kids. You're not going to retire in five years. You're uh, far too. No, young. no, no. Yeah, I'm talking five a little years. bit. Uh, no, 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 no we're not going about forty-five I years. I have. Five years. I still a lot to to go after. I. I I'm very ambitious. I, I really, I really have very high expectations of things that I want to do and get involved. Uh, as much as I can be part of uh, being part of the economic development of this country, helping the startup ecosystem. That's why we're so passionate about launching this kind of initiative, these portals, because we truly mean uh, of wanting to to give back and to contribute to to the socio-economic landscape of of this country. So. Um, I hope that you'll be here, you'll be contributing. Absolutely. So you have lots of initiatives in mind still. Yeah. You haven't you're constantly coming out with ideas, right? Yeah. yeah. Why is that? Because you, you you're passionate about this place. Uh one man taught me this uh, when we were having a similar chat, and you said, you know what people like you and me have? He was from India and he said, You and I have things, this thing called third world paranoia. And we are brought up in an environment where we're constantly thinking who is going to screw us from the neighborhood or the government wow. or the this or the that. So constantly pushing. You're pushing. constantly, and you know, when people like you and me were put forward with, a, with an idea or with an initiative or an opportunity, what do we do? We draw 17 different paths to get to that. Yeah. And, and I see this in normal, you know, uh, Westerners. They just think very simple one way one road ah, we're gonna go do this but we in the back we're thinking 17 different avenues and this is gonna happen and this guy is gonna screw me here i'm gonna have to do this and so uh, all this launch of is of these initiatives and everything is because we're paranoid about so you uh, have tons of you have uh, 15 16 ideas going through yeah, your mind. Yeah. when you come up with these ideas i know you're a ceo of a, a large company do you have a board to answer to, or you are the decision maker? Yeah, uh, I have a board, but uh, they're very, they let me be very hands on. So you uh, feel you own the business? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I rarely have to go through them to launch any of these things. That I think they picked up by now after these four or five years that they let, listen, listen, let Lorenzo run, run things the way he likes it. I think we've done an incredible job. And, uh, and they're saying, and and they are busy themselves with another five, six, ten things that they launched themselves. They're very successful in so many other businesses. So I got lucky to find the space that they're saying, this is your baby now, let it run with it. And, and you create your own luck. You've done your yeah. apprenticeship. So yeah. congratulations. Yeah. If there was three things you could teach startups, we've been one hour already, by the way. It's gone, oh, like, wow. it's gone like 15 <laughs> minutes. Thank you. Thoroughly enjoyed it. If you could advice startups on three things yeah. to watch out for. Yeah. Uh, what would they be from your experience? I would say, number one, uh, take it easy at the beginning. Uh, In what way? Uh, like uh, plan things properly. Mm -hmm. I, see, I see a lot of people uh, expecting a little bit too much from things right from the start and and things like in anything else in life takes time you're going to have challenges that you're going to have challenges yes. you're going to have to deal with a lot of things that you didn't think of so be patient be patient and uh, and adapt yourself as as you go along because the same way that you're going to have challenges you're going to have a lot of opportunities so mm -hmm. if you are too stuck in your own idea of what you wanted to do you're not going to be able to adapt to possibly new opportunities that comes. Because you it. can be blinkered and then miss out on things. 100%. That, yeah. And in my opinion, 99% of the businesses that get started uh, don't recognize where things are going to go eventually. And when you look at all these success stories of Facebooks and them, I mean, these guys, they never thought that they're going to go and set up a platform that was going to be used around the world. It was something that they, it was meant for, for a group of students yeah, exactly. in the university and stuff. So mm. uh, anything that you're about to launch, uh, what's going to come to you as challenges and as opportunities, you have no idea. So just be uh, very ready to adapt. Yes. Be patient because it takes a lot of time. 
you're going to get screwed along the way. You're going to have problems. Adapt yourself. But if you think that you're going to be making money after three, four months of operations. It's very rare. You, you, you are so that's one. One. Um, one step even before that, I would say at the beginning, play with your idea. Like, uh, don't don't be too hard on yourself. Uh, you want to build a new business. Start playing with it. Start uh, talking to people about it. Go and talk to as many people as you can so that you prove the concept because you're going to learn a lot from other people's uh, you know, suggestions and reactions to things. I remember when I started, uh, when I launched that new business in, in, in these TV programs that I was doing, I started playing with the idea. I said, okay, let me go and set up my company. So I went to Russell Heyman. I got a trade license. I said, okay, good. And then I said, let me write to some television stations that I want to do TV shows. I had never owned a phone, even filming. And I wrote to ABC television and they went, yeah, we will air your TV programs. I mean, of course I had to pay for it. So I was buying airtime, but I said, ah, okay, so that's how it works. I, if I pay these people $100,000, I'll buy 30 minutes of airtime. I can put on it whatever I want. I said, okay. And then I said, okay, let's open a bank account. I opened a bank account. And then I said, okay, let me write a letter to the president of Tanzania if he would give me an interview for ABC television. And the guy goes, yeah, come, I'll give you an interview. So then I realized, well, I have a business. I I, I set up the company. I have a bank. Uh, the, I have a TV station that will. So back one me up. step at a time, you tested the market before you just threw everything. And play with it. it. Play mm -hmm. with it. Go, go, th try this, try that. Uh, approach this guy, and and next thing you know, you, you have no other choice but to get going. <laughs> Make with it. it work. Yeah, and, and and launch yourself into business. I think there's a certain amount of bravery involved as well, because a lot of people start an idea, yeah, but then go out and asking anyone because the fear of rejection. Absolutely. Right? They don't want to, they don't yeah. want to hurt because people are going to say, you, you, this baby idea of yours yeah. isn't that good. Yeah, yeah, so they yeah, go, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So what's the third? The third will be uh, be nice and give as much value that you can at every step of the way. Every time that you have an opportunity to give value to people, do something good, go the extra mile, this will always pay back tenfold back to you. Absolutely. Because a lot of people are, I say, they're so busy looking at the tree in front of them they've they, yeah. they missed the forest right yeah. so and a lot of people make decisions based on the current financial situation yeah and often can be a little bit desperation they might charge too low because yeah. they need to pay the bill right now yeah but like you said if you look at the greater good yeah and keep getting value you will get what the market feels you worth people will always come back to you people will always recommend you people mm, will beautiful. and you'll be surprised how the world needs Entrepreneurs, they need the world needs people that want to add value and to do good. So the, the world will suck you in and present to you opportunities if if you are willing to to create value, to be good to people, and and be, if you are you know greedy and th th these opportunities will not come to you. Beautiful answers. Thank yeah. you so much. No, no one's answered that that thank way before. You. Thank you. Really spiritual and and wise. Thank you very much. It's been an honor having you here. No, thank you. I'd love to have you here again. And like I said, my office is yours. And thank you so anytime much. Anytime you want to use the studio for your amazing podcast, you'll be my guest. Thank you so much. And it will be our pleasure to have you on our podcast as well, Game Changers. And we've been friends for, for quite a, f a few years. Uh, like you said at the beginning, I met you. Uh, I remember watching your content and, and seeing a little bit of your work. And I, I was going through the mall and I saw you sitting there and I came up to you and I said, uh, you are that gladiator guy, right? And uh, we connected back then. I was, and, um, uh, it's interesting because I was thinking about it this morning in the shower. I was thinking about you in the shower. <laughs> right? But I was, I was remembering the time you caught me in a bad moment in my life. I was mm. really hurting. And when you walked away, I felt... I just dumped my situation on you. And I, and I felt truthfully, I don't mind sharing my vulnerability on online uh, to, to my followers and stuff. It's just like, I felt I lost credibility because I didn't behave like a gladiator. Mm. And uh, and then what happened, if you recall, for about a year, we just kept bumping into each other. Yeah, yeah, true. It was just like I was stalking you. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Everywhere we were bumped into you. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. there's a thing, so I'm, yeah, I'm stalking yeah. him everywhere. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the universe kept bringing us back together for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But maybe, maybe it was for me to lick my wounds and 
become a gladiator again. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I honor you. And you've done incredibly very well. Uh, that you. is, I've, I've seen what you've been up to and doing and these incredible offices that you have and the concepts that you have built and your Thank media you. company and your spas and <laughs> the different investments. I keep on hearing your name through people within our network that, oh, Darius invested in my company and this and that. So honestly, uh, uh, you know, that's the one thing that this city also has is that we're all a community of people like you, like me, like the, the, we're all here trying to make it work and, and, and do good things for people. And it's nice to be part of this community of, I of, think so. of people. I think, I'm, I, I'm going to actually ask for your advice. Yeah. Uh, I was looking at investing in a, a mutual person we know. Yeah. And, um, and I'm just literally have the money to put it in today before yeah. I go away to Canada. Yeah. And over the last four days, I've been messaging this person. Yeah. And they've been reading and not replying. Okay. Okay. It doesn't take that much to reply. To yeah. Because manners and is is and respect is very high up on my value list. Yeah. But then maybe they're going through tough times, maybe whatever, but it just takes a second. And I'm just about to invest. And I'm thinking. What if down the line, I'm saying, what's happened to my investment? And they choose to ignore. They read, it gets the blue ticks, but they ignore. Yeah, yeah. And prior to that, we've been communicating. So suddenly doubt starts setting in. Yeah, for sure. I'm like, I'm paying, I'm going to put a large amount of my children's inheritance in this business. Yeah. And this other person can choose to avoid. Mm, 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 mm. And am I being too sensitive? Should I confront this? Because I've had this dilemma for the last three days. Because I've... The only reason I mean it's overvalued this business, but I believe in the person until four days ago, until yeah. Friday. Yeah. And then since then, um, yeah, the, the the length of time it takes to acknowledge and stuff yeah. like this, I don't think it's a good good pattern. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, now I'm wondering the moment I put the money in, what am I going to be chasing? <laughs> yeah, imagine. I'm going to be chasing what's happened to other reports. Yeah. So what would you what would you suggest? Look, uh, I I. I tend to listen to a lot of these signs mm -hmm. early on on things, especially early on, you know, like yes. these things are like like getting married, you know, at the beginning of a relationship, your wife is having a little drew here and so, oh, so cute and stuff. But by the, the, the year 10, it's like, go, go on, <laughs> clean your face, you know. <laughs> it right? takes the hell out of you. Yeah, so these the are things that you got to watch out for, right? Yeah, the things that bother you in the early on, uh, then yeah, later on. It magnifies. On, they, yeah. So I, I personally think I should confront this person. Absolutely. Now, yeah. what I had sent to them yesterday, I said, let's, that was yesterday morning, and it was a working day. I sent them a message, I said, let's have a conversation. They didn't reply. Okay. And then they replied last night saying tomorrow. And till now they haven't contacted me. Now mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm going to be an integral part of the business because I'm putting, investing a lot of money. Mm. So now I've got doubts. I've you got know doubts. what I read of these things? Sometimes I try to find, obviously there is a challenge for this person within her current circumstance. Her? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Him? <Yeah. it? laughs> exactly. But, uh, but what I would try to do is what is it that is is making her think that way mm -hmm. and and where can i come in that i can try to fix something that actually will add value itself because yes. at the end of the day uh, what you're coming into is what is the role that you can play apart from the money and if you i've been uh, she's actually i don't want to clip her wings but what she i have been doing i've been introducing it to investors yeah so raising money for her. yeah and until now this person has been very good chasing following up but yeah suddenly boom disappeared and i'm like this is isn't this coincidence day so day before i invest mm -hmm. and this has happened is the universe maybe you need to sit yeah. down with her and, i think and, so. and explore so. here thank you bit, yeah that. thank well. you um because these emotions go through our mind yeah yeah we're never perfect we never you know maybe i can lose that money i don't think about it but it's not the point yeah it's the point of not repeating the same mistakes as an entrepreneur yeah absolutely because i made these mistakes 30 years ago when i was blinkered didn't see signs yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah, this yeah. And having a peer group people like you to ask for, for advice absolutely. helps a lot absolutely so. i think Thank we you. should join more forces with people like within us and mm -hmm. and really analyze such um such type of opportunities, because even when we come in, there's a lot more that we can all contribute towards. All, all these people who are looking, come and listen to us and say yeah. these behavior can put investors off. Yeah, yeah. So they can eliminate or be aware of it. Maybe this person is not even aware. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. in their own world and yeah. stuff. And well, they just she miss will, opportunity. She will look at this and uh, yeah. she will learn now. I hope she has the patience <laughs> to, to listen to us for an hour and 12 minutes. Yeah, so sure. by an hour and eight minutes, she's got off. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's been an absolute honor. No, thank, thank you, you so is. much. And thank you so much for coming. No. Oh, thoroughly you. enjoyed it. Thank you for having us, and it's a pleasure to. I salute to you, Gladiator. Thank, you, thank so you so much. Thank you.
I hope you enjoyed it half as much as I did and uh, got lots of value back. Gladiators, see you next time. Bye. Amazing.